Hi, this is Dr. David Green, founder and CEO of R3 Stem Cell, the global leader in regenerative therapies. Today we're discussing stem cell therapy for chronic liver failure in India. So let's start by talking about what the liver actually does. And it's a lot. It produces bile and also excretes it. It excretes bilirubin, cholesterol, hormones, and quite a few of the drugs we all have in our medicine cabinet go through the liver for excretion. It metabolizes fats, proteins, carbohydrates. It activates enzymes. It stores glycogen, vitamins, minerals. It puts together plasma proteins such as albumin and clotting factors. Without a good functioning liver, it's hard to actually clot properly. And it also detoxifies the blood and purifies it. What are the reasons for a liver to fail over time? Well, there's quite a few actually. A chronic infection such as hepatitis A, B, or C. An immune system issue such as autoimmune hepatitis issue, primary biliary cholangitis, primary sclerosing cholangitis. There can be some genetic issues such as hemochromatosis, Wilson's disease, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, various types of cancers, and then others would be uh, chronic alcohol abuse or a non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And if you um, take certain prescription medications, you know, too much or herbal compounds, you can sustain liver failure. So here's the progression. You start with liver inflammation and then you get scar tissue known as fibrosis. Then it leads to cirrhosis, which is severe scar tissue and the liver is not functioning well. And then you head to end stage um, liver disease. So let's look at the risk factors. Um, we talked about some of those reasons a couple slides ago, but let's just go through it again. Heavy alcohol use is one of the main reasons. Obesity, uh, type two diabetes can wreak havoc on the liver. Tattoos or body piercings can lead to um, a chronic infection like hepatitis C. Same thing with injecting drugs using shared needles. If you got a blood transfusion before 1992, they didn't know how to test for hepatitis properly. Uh, exposure to other people's blood and body fluids, unprotected sex, both of those can lead to hepatitis. Exposure to certain chemicals or toxins or family history it can be a genetic component. So when you look at the traditional treatments for liver failure, they're not great. There's various medications. Uh, diuretics can reduce excess fluid. Blood pressure medications, same thing. You can try some lifestyle changes such as weight loss, stopping the alcohol abuse. There's supportive care. We see those patients a lot where they come in and say, hey, my doctor told me there's nothing else that they can do for me. Can you please help? Frequently we can, but at that point they're just on supportive care. And then a liver transplant. There's really no um, you know, dialysis for the liver like there is for the kidney. Now, the liver is the only organ that can regenerate, which is amazing. It's the heaviest organ in the body. You can actually remove 70% of a person's liver and the rest will regenerate the organ so that it can keep on functioning. Now, let's briefly talk about a liver transplant. Um, in the United States, before transplant, patients can get on a waiting list. They must show proof of funding for 20%. Because let's say you have Medicare, which is you know, the senior insurance here in the U.S., you get covered for 80%, so you need to come up with the funds for the other 20. There's 14,000 people in the United States on the waiting list. Cost of a liver transplant could be upwards of eight, $900,000, about a year waiting time, a little less. There are a lot of exclusions. For instance, if you're over 70, it's very rare for someone to be offered a transplant. So in India, you know, these numbers are just gonna be a lot higher as far as how many people need a transplant um, and you know cost is still pretty high so let's look at some of the research on stem cell therapy for liver failure so here's a study human mesenchymal stem cell transfusion is safe and improves liver function 2012 study looked at 43 liver failure patients about half received the umbilical cord stem cells they got half a million stem cells per kilogram uh, every month for three months. So it's actually kind of a low dose. I mean, if you weigh, let's say, 80 kilograms, mm -hmm. that means you're going to get 40 million stem cells once a month for three months. Um, 
The transfusions significantly increased the survival rates. Um, they showed increased albumin, cholinesterase, prothrombin activity, platelet counts increased, serum total bilirubin and alanine aminotransferase levels were significantly decreased, which is a good thing. Um, and the transfusions were safe and they may serve as a novel therapeutic approach for those who have acute on chronic liver failure. Mesenchymal stem cell therapy for cirrhosis. Um, this is out of the World Journal of Gastroenterology. So cell therapy for cirrhosis has demonstrated that stem cells can improve liver function and deliver beneficial effects. Um, we don't know exactly how it does what it does. We have some ideas on how the stem cells are able to produce their effects. Um, we don't know exactly how, but the list includes cell-to-cell uh, -cell communication. It tells your liver, for example, look, you're not well, you're sick, you need to reprogram yourself uh, and regenerate. So it helps do that. It calls in new cells, it calls in new blood flow, things like that. It helps to reduce inflammation nicely. Here's a list of a bunch of clinical trials um, that are either in the works or have been completed. Um, you can see that a lot of these were from the bone marrow and then you have umbilical cord as well. It's interesting, on the far right, look at this, side effects or complications. All of them had none. This is a very safe treatment if the cells are processed well. Look at how many stem cells were used. Um, for instance, uh, this one's uh, 10 million. Um, this one, uh, this is per kilogram. So 10 million per kilogram. Um, this one we talked about earlier, half a million stem cells per kilogram. One million stem cells per kilogram. 3.4, uh, so 34 million, um, you know, there's just a lot of high numbers here. Um, and that we found is very important. You have to give enough stem cells to a patient in order to get the benefits, um, okay? Mesenchymal stem cell for therapy for liver fibrosis. Um, the results were that they did see hepatocyte-like cell differentiation immune modulatory potential, it can stop the body from fighting itself. Um, trophic factors were secreted, which trophic means growth, so it helps to regrow the liver. Uh, it helps to reduce scar tissue and reduce um, oxidation. Um, here's some completed uh, clinical trials. Um, again, these are all over the place. Iran, Sweden, Egypt, China, um, Korea. It's exciting to see all these countries, but what you can see in the main results section here, improvement in MELD score, improvement in MELD score, improvement, 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 all throughout these. Now, a lot of them used intrasplenic or intrahepatic injections. We don't do that. You can see that even with peripheral vein, the results were very good. Peripheral vein, peripheral vein. We, we go the safe route. We do not think that it's necessary um, to do that. For instance, here's a study with umbilical cord, um, which is what we use, and a peripheral vein study, and you got all these improvements as well. Stem cell transplant for advanced stage liver disorders. This looked at hundreds of studies. It was a meta-analysis. The stem cell-based interventions provide significant improvements in patients with chronic liver disease. It protected the liver. It reduced inflammation. Um, it modulated the immune system brought a new blood flow and reduced cell death. So it was a very effective treatment for those who not are just minor liver failure, but advanced stage. So in conclusion on those studies, many of which are small, early clinical trials, but our experience shows that stem cell therapy is not only safe for liver failure, it's typically very, very effective. We do need to give the proper amount of stem cells. We give at least 1 million stem cells per kilogram, frequently more because we know that those numbers are necessary. When we see patients come to us who've had failure with stem cell therapy, typically it's because they didn't get enough high quality stem cells. We make sure that doesn't happen. I do wanna point out that embryonic stem cells and induced pluripotent stem cells are not ready for prime time use. You should run away if someone uh, suggests those. We use what's called adult stem cells from um, umbilical cord tissue with uh, mesenchymal and hematopoietic stem cells. We also use stem cell exosomes, which have shown to be a great one-two combination for treatment. So our treatment program in India is in New Delhi. 
We have a beautiful location. Our process starts with a free phone consultation. We'll assign you a patient concierge representative who will assist you with setting that up, as well as all your travel logistics, you know, including the ground transportation, which is included from the hotel, airport, clinic, and back. All international patients who come in for treatment, if they want, receive a free trip to the Taj Mahal. It's one of the seven wonders of the world. It is a wonder. It looks like a postcard when you go. It's amazing to see that, especially when you realize it took like 22 years to build and 22,000 workers. It's incredible. The cells that we use come from umbilical cords um, obtained and processed in the United States. We have a pristine safety record. We use FDA quality assurance standards. We've never had a significant adverse event in over a decade and 21,000 procedures. These are pure potent stem cells with what I call a biological soup of growth factors, exosomes, cytokines, secretomes. So start the process today by visiting us at r3stemcell.com slash India. There's a local phone number on the website. You can also call our headquarter number at USA prefix of 1-888-988-0515. Thanks for joining me.